This episode is brought to you by Honey Gain. Make money with Honey Gain. How do you feel about your, your, your woman uh, being on uh, Metro? I'm excited, man. I'm excited yeah. for my girl. Like, you know, my girl, it's the power of the town, bro. Like, when she left Kaya, she, she had to take some time off from this radio thing and, and just spend time with myself and focus on TV. And one thing my girl has is she got balls of steel, bro. And I've always told her, like, maybe it's the vendor jeans and shit. Like, when she... When she left, why? So when she finds something she likes, she doesn't mind risking it all and just taking the leap of faith and jumping. You know, she, when she left, why? She took a leap of faith and joined ANN7. And then ANN7 happened and she decided to, to leave ANN7 and just spend time with herself. And she took like, it was eight months, an eight month hiatus. Like, and I think it's very important for people to start spending, like, have conversations with yourself and figure out what you want and what you're about. Um, and then when she left and in seven, that eight months period, six months of it, you know, she was, she was rested and then she started reaching out to radio stations and then she joined Kaya. Um, and then she worked her ass off at Kaya. It was challenging. She's a true journalist at heart and she loves true news. And then a few years later, um, she decided to leave Kaya to join this, this new TV channel that had started uh, which is 405 Newsroom Africa. And she loved it so much because it allowed her room to go on the ground and uh, it was a totally different experience uh, for her to, to be great in her craft, which is being a news journalist. Um, and then last two years ago, she started saying, I want to join ACBC, but I want to join Metro first. I was like, yo, do you know the queue out there? Yeah, the queue yeah, at Metro is yeah. heavy. <laughs> Trust me, I know. I can do this. And she's like, nah, don't worry. I'm joining Metro though. Give me, give me time. Metro, I'm joining Metro. I was like, okay, cool. You join Metro, babe. I got you. And then she, she started finding out who, who's who at Metro. You know, she started hustling. And I'm watching all of this happen. Uh, started listening to all the journalists there at Metro. Okay, this is how Mel sounds like. This is how Betty sounds like. You know what I mean? And she started giving me insights on how people read in a certain mm. way. And this is what she would bring to the table. Mm. And then she told me we were in Singapore. She's like, babe, this year I'm joining Metro. Save mm. this tweet. And she was saying it like, I remember we were about to go out that night. I'm about to leave the hotel. And she said, I'm joining Metro this year. Wait. Okay, cool. And she had said it before when we were in London. I was like, okay, we'll see. But we came back. She recorded her demo. She's like, this is what Metro doesn't have with mm. the demo. We recorded the demo, and she said, this is what I'm bringing to Metro. And we mm. recorded it. I remember I booked a studio, Office Studios in Greenside. And when she laced it down, it was a few options. But it was just, you know, when you look at your girl, you're like, shit, fuck. Like, yeah. I need that hit. I need mm. that. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, she sent the demo to Tony. Um, Tony took a while. Um, and then eventually they caught, and, and she had a conversation with, she's been having conversations with Tony from 2019, in the beginning of 2019, uh, when Flavor had just taken over the breakfast show. Mm. But everything manifested this year. Wow. You know what I mean? So, wow. and, and I think people don't know that side of my girl. Like, we, we push each other so much, we challenge each other so much. The difference between me and her is that I play a long game. And she doesn't mind playing a long game that takes different routes. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. She doesn't mind, like, doing that. I'm like, whew. Nah. I don't, wow. I don't risk. All right. Can, you know, can, we, just take a, can we just take a break? Can we just take a break? Because I'm about to run out of um, my, the minutes I can record. So I'm going to send you uh, a, a new link. Yeah. And then we'll record again for, for 20 minutes. And then we'll be done. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to exit now and then I'll resend you a link. Ne? Okay, what do I say? Stop. Ah, no, don't worry. I'll, oh, I don't I'll, I'll exit from my side. Don't stress.
Sweet. Fantastic. No, that's amazing, man. And how has how has fatherhood changed you? Fatherhood has just given me more reason to do certain shit and certain reasons to not do certain shit. So because man, before I became a dad, I used to attend anything just because. <laughs> sure, mobs. You know? Yeah. Just I didn't have a six pack. I used to I used to just go, bruh. So I got the time, why not? Fucking go. Um where did you meet your woman, bro? Home. Yeah? Where did you meet your woman? <laughs> I met my woman at Y. Oh, wow! <laughs> uh, yeah, we met at Y, bro. Bad boy, so T with vibes. Yeah, weird enough. Um, she threw the bones. Um, so what happened is I went to the newsroom one day. So I used to see her. She, 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 she was in the Y Academy. Um, and I used to see this girl, man. Like I used to call her the black cowboy chick because she used to dress like Taylor Swift with boots and shit. Like, I, I, like and her English was very like never done about their way to high school. Like probably started like very fancy and shit. Like they, I would say pink. She'll say Mars. That bullshit. That <laughs> uh, and 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 then she was just my type. But when I'm in a relationship, I just don't. I don't know. I just don't look at another woman. And at the time. There was a time where my current relationship at the time was, things were just not going together, working out. Um, I went to the newsroom. Um, she, she flirted, I flirted back. And, and then the story started, man. We went on our first date out at Midrand. And from there, man, like, we've been, we've been together for, for donkey years now. Six, Are you planning to get seven. married anytime soon? Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice, definitely, nice. Definitely. I can tell you this in tape. Like, yeah, you know, until Rihanna says what's good and we can go on a date, which will never happen. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Definitely. All right, cool. We're about to play a game called um, One Must Die. Yo! So like, I'm going give... to <laughs> I'm gonna give you um, um, some radio broadcasters and you must choose one. One must die. Ne? Okay. All right, cool. We're going to start with more flavor, DJ Fresh. One must die. More. More must die. Yeah. Why is that? I just, I'm a big fan of, of, of how Fresh has played the long game. Yeah. And I'm a big fan of how he was able to, to tap in different markets. You know, Fresh moved from Y, went to Five. There was so much fucking hate he, got, he went through over there. Built a monster of a radio show. Um, he was able to do breakfast and drive on that station, did breakfast and drive on Y, mm. um, and then went to Metro, was bossing it in the morning, mm. um, and now he's on 947. For me, like, and, 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 and I can't, like, more also had a similar career here where he had a dope run, but moving from, from Y to Metro, you mm. know, it's, mm. it's great. But there was that challenge I think Fresh took going to five it's like a new audience bro like they found his laugh annoying i remember that hate you he got at the time in the comment sections mm. it was always crazy and and to be able to to with, like withhold all that pressure and and become the fire of a brand that it is to this day and i don't think people understand any... people don't understand mm. his career because right now as it is he can still do 947 uh, breakfast for maybe another five years and after that he can still go to yeah. kaya do drive there and mm. breakfast there and go back to Prime Media and do 702. That's like 30 years, bro. Yes. And that's what I'm saying to you. It's like people sometimes think now. I'm thinking like long game. You look at how Alex J played his game. Alex J should have joined Jacaranda a long time ago. But he decided to do what? Do 947, went to 94.5 KFM, kept yo yo the two. And he was like, okay, cool, it's fine. Then he went to, you know, Chakaranda. Uh, he's doing his thing right there. But even if he wanted, he could have said, Prime Media, finish all the stations there, head out to Radio 2000, you know, have fun there with the Solid Gold vibes, and then go to Chakaranda, mm. you know? Mm. So it's up to you how you want to play, because fresh, fresh look at the jammer, bro. <laughs> like, we're trying to be on, if you're trying to be on the air until you're 50-something, Look at guys like that. Like, yeah. just play your game. Like, this thing is chess. I look at it as chess. Like, I'm not trying, I'm not competing with anyone. I'm competing with myself. 
uh, how far can I take my radio? How, and also, if you got to adapt, Fresh is also one of those guys. Yeah. Fresh adapted to everything. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and also, he's never been scared to keep the door open, you know, putting putting yeah. niggas on. Yeah. That uh, is, that is, that like is inspiring. Keep it going. <laughs> What did Shinza do to you? Nah, nothing. Didn't that's you have him on the show? No, that's my nigga, dog. We, we, we oh. chopped it up. We chopped it up. But anyway, speaking about 947, <laughs> have they ever t- uh, tapped you up to mm. come that side? Yeah. Ah, shout out to Ravi Naidu. Mm. Me and Ravi are cool. Oh, um, Ravi's... I did. I did. I did. Huh? Ravi's no, a long time ago. So, yes, yes, yes. So... I was at 947. So when I left KFM from Cape Town, because I got my break actually on KFM in Cape Town, and then I asked for a transfer to join 9... It was High Fell Steer at the time. I used to do the show before Brad Brown. Brad Brown, was for me, is like one of those talented niggas like ENF. Mm. Um, you know, very clean, great behind the mic. Um, and then I just felt like at, at High Fell at the time, I wasn't getting enough airtime, you know, because mm. you'd get like... If I would call you, you get like two shows a month or... One show a month, my tapet was still the programming manager. And then I left, joined the Academy, started from the bottom again. I remember when I joined the Academy, the twins used to laugh at me because I used to do a kid's show at ACBC One, Cobody Sanani. They were like, But you got money, why are you here? Why are you an intern? <laughs> like, I, said, I, want, I want a show so bad. I want in, I want in. And getting at why, like, Domelo, like, I don't know how many demos I'd sent him, bro. Like, and I was like, fuck, swallow your pride, start from the bottom again. What Set show did game. Ravi Naidu um, offer you? Ravi offered me 12 to 3 when Tolly left. Oh, shit. When, yeah, yeah. when Tolly B left, he called me and offered me 12 to 3. I remember very well. And I was like, shit, Ravi, I just started driving why. Mm. I'm sorry. Like, I just started driving why. Let me finish my chapter here. Let me... Let me tell the story. Let me go through this dream I've always had on doing drive or breakfast at Y. And then I'll be able to give you my all. Like mm. it's pointless jumping into something and you're still longing to experience this something and you have an opportunity to do, to do best. Um, and then it played out well, man. Like first year when I was doing drive, we got that nomination. Um, and I'm sure also as, as, as someone who had reached out, he saw that, oh shit, this kid is... Is, is playing the long game. Like, let, let's wait. Let's wait. Yeah, All right, cool. So. Uh, Tanda Tabuti versus Nia Brown. One must die. Nia. Nia, ne? Nia. Nia can die for now, yeah. Oh, um, shit. Nia Brown. I thought it's Nia Brown. Sorry, man. Yeah. Nia Brown. Yeah, yeah Nia Brown. Yeah. yeah. Tando, Tando. I don't think... You see what's... Tando's great on the mic, ne? She's fucking amazing. But I don't think people understand... Her technical ear. Mm. Tando's probably one of the best technical radio DJs in the fucking game. Yeah, like, yeah. Tando is able to, to mix shit, mm. like, from, from, from liners to the music, and you're like, whew. Mm. And, it's, and it will stay like, you know what I mean? For me, that's, it's, it's rare. Some people will be dope on air, mm-hmm. but they will lack here. Yeah. That chick is just an all-rounder. And with Nia, she has all the qualities. It's just that uh, Tando has done a little bit more. Um, and, and what did and you I think, think about that, that, that thread that she put up of how she left five, uh, Tando Tabuti? It's hard to have an opinion on that because I feel like there's another layer. You know, five still needs to tell us they started the story uh, to get the truth. But if she was really offered like four to seven um, on a Sunday, uh, it was definitely not cool. But at the same time, from the outside looking in, she was never there, you know, mm. for her drive show because mm. she started booming, she was traveling. And then I can only really imagine how the station it could it was uh, when it comes to trying to build this drive show and your host is always like traveling, you know. So I think sometimes that could have been another reason. Uh, I don't know what conversations I were having, but it would be great to also find out the other side. I haven't worked at the ACBC and people always say like whatever they say. I haven't experienced it, so I can't talk on ACBC radio. I've only done like TV and on, on a small scale. Um, but definitely, I'll, I'll say Tando. All right, cool. Fat Joe against the late great Chili M. That's a hard one. I'll give it to Danny. 
Teddy. I give it to Teddy. Mm. I give it to Teddy. Yeah. The thing about Teddy, he had he had more life experiences mm. that made him fucking amazing. Mm. He did so much and he shared it on the radio. Um yeah. And he always came up, man. The dude went on he dude was on Vuma FM, like that's a gospel station. <laughs> you know? Like it takes it takes a strong freaking shock jog to boss it on freaking gospel for you to back announce Benjamin Dube and not mess that ish up. It's special, bro. So definitely, definitely, I'll, I'll go with chili. I'll give. I'll go for chili. Chili uh, was so raw, man. Can you give me a, a chili story? Food. Everybody has one, man. Yo, I didn't. I didn't get to interact with chili on a personal level. Oh wow. I never got to interact with him on a personal level. And that's just probably something I, I don't have with all the other jocks. Um, but he was the first jock I heard when I arrived in Joburg in a police van. Because um, mm. I got a lift from one of my uncles who was a cop and he was dropping some pockets here at Joburg. And my arrival in this city was in a police van. I'm sitting at the back. You know, I've been getting freaking my wind has been blowing in my face, you know, for, for 500 kilometers. And then I got my headphones on and I put on 992 nine, and the essential rush was on, dog. Whew. Hmm. I've never heard jingles like that. I've never heard like a link like that. I've never heard my daddy like that. It was like, fuck, you know, when you listen to radio and you, you there, you can't even think of moving to anything else. Like nothing else matters on the radio dial. Mm. It's just that guy right now, yeah. you know? And I was like, shit. Because when you stream something, I used to stream Y at the Love Life Youth Center because they had internet. But when you listen to it on radio, it fills up your headphones yeah, yeah. and you're like, shit. And, and I remember also when I saw you and the twins, y'all had just joined Y broadcasting at the corner of Rosebank at the garage. I was like, y'all are just too cool, bruh. Like, that's just... <laughs> <that's, that's, laughs> You know, you were drinking a fucking Heineken at nine in the morning, dog. You know, I'm like, <laughs> that's another level of cool. Do you get that? You know, and I was like, shit. I remember I used to talk to my friend Karabo when we went there to see you guys and we saw some wood, Bri. I'm like, bro, like these guys are cool, cool. And he was like, nah, bro, why is it just about being yourself? You're also cool, but it's just that they're on Y, so they extra cool, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, so to be part of this, ethos and having seen you guys is like inspirational man and yeah man it, it's i definitely yeah i'll definitely go for chili bro i don't right, have cool. a chili story but the drug bus story was insane when he when he <laughs> when he ousted his drug dealer for radio that shit had me hooked like that 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 shit was insane all right anele, <laughs> anele against mom daddy Mom ranak mom daddy obviously number one yeah. Oh, Dineo, I got to experience Dineo alive. Yeah. Um, you know, and also, you know, I still, I'm a big fan of Anel. I would still like to hear Anel on a platform like Metro. Mm. You know, I would still like to hear Anel on a platform that is historically for Abu Dhabi. Mm. You know, mm. Mm. she killed on five uh, with Grant and they had an amazing lunchtime show. And she's bossing it on breakfast right now. But I would still like to hear her challenging herself, car radio. Like I've never heard her do it on a platform like your metros. Um, you know, it's always been like on the top forty formats and that kind of vibe. But I'll definitely go for Mum Dead. Are right, we gonna take it international? Cool. Uh Shall I mean the God versus Howard Stern? Howard Stern, how dare you put Howard Stern up against Charlemagne? How dare you, man? Shit! <laughs> Even Charlemagne will be surprised, my nigga. <laughs> Shit! Howard Stern, dog. <laughs> the God, the highest paid dog of all time. Be all, my nigga. Woo. Do you know, I didn't know about Howard Stern <laughs> until um, I had to attend uh, Y Academy class. Because remember, I had to attend the Y Academy. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't they know Howard that Stern. Movie for us. Yeah, I didn't know Howard Stern until mm. then. I was like, what the fuck is Howard this guy? Stern through... Yeah. I used to hear Howard, Gareth used to make reference of Howard Stern during his shows on Five. But I never used to take note of this nigga. Um, and Gareth would always say, this is the only dude that, one of the dudes that inspired him. 
But when we watched that movie, that Houston Private Parts movie, I was like, she, this nigga. This nigga's like insane. You know? Um, yo, but how it's, I, I think also this, this, the great story about Howard Stern is he's a guy who was just never scared to share with his listeners what he's going through. Um, and also just speaking your mind, you know? And we're living in an era now where uh, jocks who do not share what they're going through and jocks who do not share how they truly feel will suffer. Yeah, you you no longer now you you listening for the music, but you're also listening to the shit in between. If the shit in between is cock, you flash it. If the kick shit is nice, you're like, oh shit, whatever the shit is, I like this, I like this. And that's why the podcasts are booming, you know, um, because people like how the fuck you ask us shit and how you you address shit and how you view shit, you know. Mm. Um, if if it wasn't for that, like I don't even think people would be subscribing to your channel. Yeah, and that leads me to my next uh, one must die. Radio or podcasting? One must die. Now, you see with this one, it's a bit tricky. Mm -hmm. Podcasting is the future. Radio is traditional. Mm -hmm. For radio to survive, they need to adapt. So technically, radio is dead to a certain degree in spaces that uh, are very techno-savvy. You know, if data had to become freaking cheap in South Africa, already in Joburg, you feel it. Like, I'll be driving and I'll be hearing dudes streaming. You know, I'm also driving and I'm on TuneIn Radio and I'm streaming. Um, I'm on SoundCloud and I'm streaming all these shows. So radio has to adapt. You know, as much as FM is one of the strongest means of broadcasting and it reaches a more uh, broader audience in the African context, Everyone needs to adapt to what the internet is doing, especially if you're playing in the urban space. You can't mess with those cozy FM numbers. Those numbers are going to be like that for the next 20 years. With the internet, without the internet. Yeah. Those, those stations serve a totally different mandate. But Abo Y, Abo Metro, uh, Abo 947, all these commercial, urban-friendly stations, we got to play with where the market is. Like We literally follow where the market is going. You know? Um, and that's why we're going we're gonna to start seeing some podcasters joining radio. That is also coming, where and MacG is going to come with this audience into a radio station, mm. and then it, they're going to find a common ground to work together. You Monetize, know? yeah. It's coming. Yeah, it's coming. So I'll be going back to my roots. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Me, I've, I've told you what you need to do to get back on radio. Yeah. Okay, listen, so you are programs manager. You don't want to get back. You are programs manager of YFM. Digital is radios under attack from digital. You are the programs manager. What is your lineup to combat this thing that's coming? Podcasting, digital, whatever. From the breakfast to drive time, what's your lineup right now on YFM? Right now. I'll still keep everyone. I'll just force everyone to, to, I still feel like one thing we can all do is every show needs to have a digital component. Gone are the days of just putting a topic on Twitter and putting a topic on Facebook. Yeah, so what? Then you're just going to read opinions. You literally need, like how the Americans are doing it right now in the UK, where radio's on TV and radio's online live. Same time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You have to integrate your content into the digital platform where people can get ex an experience to touch, feel, and experience it and then engage with it. So why don't you, you do know, that? this you thing of show, bro? Yeah, yeah, I'm actually with my producer right now. Uh, mm. we, you know, here's Mohal this side. Uh, so it's in the pipeline. There's, there's, there's more to it, bro. Like there's God, we can't be freaking putting just topics alone. Like if we if we actually accepting competition with digital, we have to give people more content. Uh, that's why you're seeing the break. If it wasn't for YouTube, we wouldn't know about the Breakfast Club. 100%. Yeah. Um, mm. it, you know, they, they cut audio, they put it out. So you consistently feed the dragon with content. You, you keep feeding the masses with content. So on my side, I would make sure, because I think everyone at Y right now, with the YFM lineup from, from 9 until, you know, from t until 10, I'm happy with what I'm hearing when I listen. It's just that I will shoot up a little bit more when it comes to digital content feed. Tap is an amazing storyteller. You can do so much with Ankle Tap when it comes to putting up content on the visuals. And you can draw a whole lot of viewers who still think he's black to watch to really find <laughs> out. I'm still freaking use that shit. 
I will use Kuto's beautiful freaking banging body to share more fitness tips. I think she's got a banging uh, story to tell. I'll also use that. Let the numbers shoot off the roof with niggas watching that shit and ladies watching that shit to try and have a body like hers. Nia and Tor are crazy as fudge. Those are the friends you have on the radio who are very edgy. Mm. Um, and they have a way of sharing their life experiences that you could literally kill when it comes to uh, 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 social media. Uh, we have music, uh, you know, templates on a show. You know, I have reached to any artists across the globe. We can literally use that to feed the audience uh, with that kind of content because uh, our mandate is absolutely different. We have LTV, so it's got a broad experience when it comes to acting. We could do some bomb ass skits around that. Uh, Mohao is a summer award winning uh, producer. So when it comes to visual, he knows what to do. And that she's the rock star of the station. You know, she she knows all the coolest soccer players, all the coolest artists. Take all that shit, put it on digital. On my end, I'll take all those components, feed them onto digital, and marry it with the actual video show. And then after that, you you won't fuck with us, genuinely. I got you, you know? man. All right, cool. So um, just in closing, I know you're an artist as well. Um, what do you think about being an artist after lockdown because everybody's panicking about gigs you know no man people must just give people music man people just must give music like drop music people this is the right time to to drop music but also it's not the right time to drop music so mm. if you have songs like what Carson Light is doing right now in bed with several artists yeah. is dropping songs that artists were never going to drop mm. artists need to go into their hard drives and feed the people feed I think that's what Cass was doing. He's just giving us music. Just so when he, he starts touring, people are gonna, you, it's all about being top of mind during this moment right now. You know, Casper's heavy on TikTok. He's heavy on the gram, he's heavy on Twitter. Um, Tweezy and Gemini Major have come together to do these battles. It's Nasty C and MT now. Um, Who do you think is gonna take it tonight? Just, that one is hard to, hey, hard it's to tell. Tricky. We did it on the radio. <laughs> tricky, we did it on the radio and on Twitter, on, on, on Twitter, Nasty One, on Radio, MT One. Uh, so it's, that one is, is generally tricky. Because um, they both have a solid catalog, tit for tat, tat for tit, yin and yang, like punch for punch. It's, it's going to be a, a heavy, heavy battle. Um, I hear what you're yeah. saying about being top of mind, but at the end of the day, if I'm surviving of gigs, after lockdown, I don't think we just going to go back to gigging five gigs a weekend. I think it's going to take a while before we, we see that again. Yeah, but that's why I feel like the true creatives are surviving now. If you're a true creative uh, and, and, you, and you fully understand why you got into this business and you, you are able to think of shit, you will make it work. Look yeah, at that- Shims and TA. They came together, created a lockdown, it's on TV. And the beauty you know? about that, the beauty about this COVID-19 thing, apart from everybody dying, is the fact that everybody's gone to basics. Like now, when was the last time you actually listened to DJ, DJing, like the te- technical ability, their mixing? Mm. I can't remember because in the club, you don't look at that, you know, but with lockdown, the lockdown yeah. house party, it's all about your technique, your song selection. It's gone back yes. to the basics of what DJing was about. Mm. And also on radio, it's gone back to the basics of entertainers. Entertainers. Yeah, yeah. We, freak, nigga, we heard the song in the morning. We heard it again in the afternoon. What else? You know, like if, if, like I was looking at the numbers, people are listening to more radio and people are just, people are actually watching all these live feeds that are going out there. People want content, mm. you know? And the reason why quarantine radio is winning so much, it's entertainment. Uh, and everyone is now trying to sample what he's doing. Mm. Uh, you look at what you're also doing now. This is entertaining because it's different, you know. Mm. Uh, it's still addressing the importance of social distancing, me being here and you being there. It's different, you know. And one can imagine when we're actually there and having this conversation, I would come with the alcohol as always and we'll have shots. I don't think people have heard you when you're drunk <laughs> or when you're tipsy. We still need to give them that shit because I think that shit is going to be lit shit where people realize that, the Mac G we fucking love so much on the radio is this Mac G. <laughs> Sober minded, but now he's tips. <laughs> next time we do this live, we'll yeah.
I'm out of alcohol, bro. Make, make, make uh, drop me some clippies there. I know you got a plug there. <laughs> I'll bring you clippies. I'll bring you clippies and cola. I'll bring you anything, gin, vodka, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have our champs, champs episode, drinking champs. Yeah. But listen, Savvy, thank you yeah. so much for joining me, man. I really appreciate this. And uh, me and you always chat offline about stuff that we want to do yeah. and want to work together. And that's one thing that uh, this COVID-19 has made me realize that We'll have so many ideas, but we just got to fucking do it, man. We just got to do it. Yeah. That is so true. We've, we've been talking about doing some shit together. Yeah, yeah. We've been, been we've been, you right, know, cool, so man. let's, let's make it happen. Like, thank you for, for seeing me as an important person to have on your podcast. Finally. Uh, ah. I feel like a celebrity now. Oh, uh, please. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. I feel great. I'm not even going to tell you this episode is going to get how many views. I don't have that season mileage. But um, thank no, you. No, it's only because Fresh couldn't make it today. So I was like, ah, who else can I say? <laughs> I was waiting for your fucking punchline. We've never had a conversation so long and clean without you taking a punch at me. It's fine. I'm going to go on the radio while you edit this video. <laughs> Let me, let me long time, bro. Let me long time, bro. <laughs> Sharp. <Yeah. laughs> Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. This episode is brought to you by Honey Gain.